welcome again to another edition of Getting to Know Your Indiana Neighbor. I've been wanting to get this neighbor here for quite some time. Distance has been the problem. Wayne Flick, welcome to Getting to Know Your Indiana Neighbor. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for having me, man. Wayne makes a lot of trips, though, down here. We're going to talk about some of the reasons he comes back to his hometown. North side of Indianapolis? Fishers. 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 Northeast. Okay, big time up there, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, Wayne... Um, Many, many of you know Wayne Flick, particularly those who grew up in this area, class of 1974. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Um, great basketball player. We'll talk about that. But an Indiana State trooper and with the Indiana State Police for how many years, Wayne? 32. 32 years. So we'll talk about that profession, the dangers of it, the interesting aspects of being a trooper, and, and what Wayne's up to these days in, in just a little bit. But as always, Wayne, let's kind of go through your life a little bit. Let's start your upbringing, um, talk about your, your parents, your siblings a little bit, and uh, let people know about them. Well, Greg, I uh, grew up in Lagoda, of course. My mom and dad, uh, dad grew up over around French Lick, out in the country. It's near, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with Jackson Ramp of Patoka Lake, it was near that area. Uh, he grew up over there as, from a family. He had uh, 12 kids. Uh, he, he was one of 12 he kids. Was one of, he was the, f the first boy. Uh, there was Faye Mary, Opal, Elmer, Earl, Lois, Elvin, Calvin, Norman, Delbert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's eight of them. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he grew up over there uh, when he was 15. The Barnum Bailey Circus came to French Lick and okay. did their thing. Yeah. And when they left, he went with them. No kidding. 15 years old. Elmer Flick. So was this something that uh, he discussed with parents and just ran no, off? No, no, no. He just, it was, uh, it was, that would have been 1933, so that would have been a depression. Yeah. So that was a real thing. People actually, he, I've heard of that, but yeah. people actually went off with the circus. He did. He, Elmer did. And uh, he came back about, I don't know, four or five years later, he came back. Yeah. Uh, what did he do in the circus? He ended up being the main electrician. Okay. Uh, made friends with Emma Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. He's a friend with Emma Kelly. Came back here, uh, went to work at Crane in the construction part of building Crane. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Building that's, crane. That's, he was building crane. And who knew at that time, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, in uh, 41, uh, they came in one, like on a Thursday or Friday, and said, Oh, you fellas on this work site, when you go home this weekend, you need to get your affairs in order because when you come back Monday, you're going to the Navy. So he came back Monday, and they, the Navy came and rounded them all up. And for some reason, they picked two guys out of that bunch to stay there. Dad was one of them. And put them to work for the federal government making bombs, basically. Mm -hmm. He started his career in 1941 working at Crane as a federal employee. And uh, 33 years later, right after I graduated from high school in 1974, he retired. And at that time, he was a supervisor over ordinance, and it was like he had like he was like over twelve thousand people. Wow! The supervisor up yeah. there did all they they did everything from forty five caliber ammunition mm -hmm. to two thousand pound bomb. Wow! That's a man with an eighth grade education. Is that right? Yes. So a and 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 some circus experience. Yeah, right? absolutely. But but no, that that that's amazing. Yeah. And in that time frame, you know, I mean, when you think about it. America really was the land of the, well, I mean, the opportunities, right? Yes. I mean, you yes. had to take advantage of it, but how he went yep. from 15 years old, running away to come back to the success that he had. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I did not know what your dad did as a profession. Well, as close as he and Coach Butcher were, right. Jack didn't either until maybe five or six years Is ago. Is that right? Yeah, he, we were doing something somewhere. Yeah. Dad, I brought Dad's name up, or he did. He said, what, what do you do? Oh, and my. I told him. Yeah. So he knew he worked at Crane, but he didn't know what he did. You know? Before we move away from yeah. that, you mentioned Coach Butcher. Today is Rita Butcher's 90th birthday. Happy birthday, Rita. Now, when people see this, she'll yeah. be 90-plus. <laughs> but 
Yes. What a grand lady. Yeah. What uh, a grand lady. And, and I, you're very, you have a very close relationship I, with her. I family. saw that this morning, and, and uh, I, I, I posted it on uh, on on the Butcher G side on uh, Facebook about the matriarch of yeah. Ligoti uh, basketball family. So, yeah, absolutely. Happy birthday. Yes, happy Richard. birthday, yeah. and I hope you're doing well. Yeah. Um, we didn't even mention your dad's name, though. Elmer Flick. Elmer Flick. And, you know, when I think of Elmer Flick, all I know is that that ardent basketball fan, you know, <laughs> I, I remember they all wore the little jackets that had the linebackers and the hats and such. And I remember telling you one time about that. And you said that people would be surprised that even though at the games, yes, it could be boisterous. He might be loud. He might be opinionated, but he was pretty calm and mild gentleman. He wouldn't say crap if he had a mouthful of it. Is that right? He was, he didn't say something unless it needed to be said. Unless he was in a basketball game. Yeah, interesting. And, yeah. and and did you ever hear him pop his cups at the ball game? No, I did not. No, I remember that, though. Those, you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he'd save up two or three cups during the game. And I don't know, maybe the third quarter or whatever, he'd sit down and smash that with his foot. And it'd sound like a shot. <laughs> now, this was his, at the old JFK gym? No, at both gyms. At both gyms. Both you can gyms. imagine in the old JFK Oh, yeah. Gym. Well, and... He, they, they set up stairs in the old gym. Mm -hmm. They set up stairs. Okay, it would have been in the southwest corner upstairs. So every time he does that there, yeah. I mean, I imagine that old building ship. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. Peop there's people watching this that have no idea <laughs> what we're talking about. Yeah. But most do. You had the, the you had the soft drink served in like a Coke cup, it just, just like you'd get the rich theater, paper. right? Yes. And then you'd turn it upside down and stomp on it. I never could do it. <laughs> I couldn't even. But, but people could, and you're right. It sounds like a gunshot. In <laughs> yeah. fact, today, if you did it, yeah. you might oh, be yeah. making a trip. You might be in yeah. trouble. You might, yeah. yeah. But but this was a grown man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who enjoyed doing that. That's, that's fantastic. All right. Uh, Mom. Yep. Mom grew up in Beckley, West Virginia. Beckley, West Virginia. Beckley, West Virginia. Interesting to find out how she got here. She was a mountaineer. Uh, Mom had she had a Juanita half, Flick. Juanita Flick. I'm, yes, she had a uh, half brother named Finley Troutman. Uh, he was a little older than her, and he was in the Navy, and he was stationed at Crane. And when she graduated. She came out here to find a job. Okay. And she did. Her first job was at the Reliant Shirt Company. Yeah. And how many people have worked there? Oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of my relatives, yeah. Yeah. So she went to work right there. Right across the street here. Yes. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Exactly. No. The first place was Reliant. It's just on the other side of the railroad tracks okay. across the old home outfitters. Oh, okay. where Dave Harris's print shop was. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. That was the Reliant Shirt Company. Wow, okay. What was this called then? Edison. Edison. Edison? Edison. All right. Edison. Okay. Take your word for it. So, mom came out here. Uh, she graduated in 44, I think. Yes. She was, yes, she was 17. She was young. came out here, went to work, uh, ended up meeting dad through Uncle Finn. Uh, they ended up getting married in 46. 46. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, think about it. If you could have a reunion of the people who met at Crane. Yes. And were married. Yes. I mean, it, it, yeah. It's it, it, amazing. No, it's, yeah. yeah. It, right. It would be. So she worked at the, started at the Reliant Factory. She did work over here uh, later on. And then uh, the year I started school. In August of 1962, she went to work in the office at the high school. Mm -hmm. That's where I remember her. And well, she was there a long time. 27 years. Mm. And because uh, her and Mr. Page were very close. Uh, she loved it. She loved what she did. Uh, I've had many, many kids tell me. That they were more scared of my mom than they yeah. were Mr. Page. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. Since you said that. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> and you know what? I, I don't remember any reason. I really don't. Maybe maybe it was just the, you know, her, her reputation preceded her. I don't know. She's very nice. I, I think probably what it was was she tried to run a lot of interference for Mr. Page. Yeah. And in doing that, uh, if she wasn't afraid. Of anything, uh -huh. and I think 
probably she may have been a little overzealous to protect him. <laughs> and in doing that, she came off a lot yeah. meaner than what she was. And, and, and back then, uh, it was okay. I mean, everybody was a disciplinarian, right? Yes. Adults were disciplinarians. Yes. And uh, yes. you'd look out for the kids, but you wanted to make sure that they yeah. behaved. And yep. it didn't matter if you were the exactly. secretary or the exactly. principal or superintendent. Exactly. Right. Yeah. She worked there for 29 years, 27 years, excuse me. Uh, when she retired, she had been using a, uh, uh, a program. She was the ECA, extracurricular mm -hmm. activities, yeah. secretary, treasurer. So she, had, she, I think she ended up developing this somehow, this program. And when she retired, she was selling it around the state. And she'd go out and the schools would buy it. She'd go train them on it and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, uh, she was heavily involved in the uh, ticket sales, right? Any oh, time there were these. Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah, That's a good yeah. story. What you got there? Uh, I don't know what year it was. Bloomington North came to town. Okay. That night was a junior or senior. Mm -hmm. And mom happened to be working a ticket office that night at the front gate. Lady come in carrying a camera. Mom said, no, no, no cameras allowed in the gym. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, she, I, can, I can take this in. Mom said, there's no cameras allowed in the, the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Lady said, well, you apparently don't know who my husband is. Mom said, no, I don't. She said, well, my husband's Bob Knight. Mom said, well, my husband's Elmer Flick. <laughs> and you're not taking that camera inside. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't know. She that. turned around, went to the car, and came back without her camera. Oh, that's yeah, I do remember every gymnasium would have yes. that. Okay. Right. And, and you know what? You got your phones and every camera's in the thing. You know, yeah. like videos and yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can be done. But the, yes, the, the, the ticket I remember, of course, would start in 70 big time. You know, and they started to have the drawings every year. And I mean, that, that, that was probably one of her bigger stressors. Yeah. Ooh. Because. Uh, Everybody wanted a ticket. Everybody wanted a ticket. You know, yeah. I, I remember in, in, I was in eighth grade in 70 when we went to the final four. And uh, I think the seventh or eighth grade may have been as low as it went. Yeah, probably so. You know. Probably so. Uh, and then, of course, they, they learned a lot that year from, you know, that they could use from then on. But uh, she did a lot of finagling with other schools around to get tickets and stuff. I know that. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was, that was probably one of the more stressful parts of of what she did yeah. was, who would have think getting a ticket to a basketball game would be that stressful? I know. Well, well you I mean, know, here. I mean, yeah, I mean, even those of us who wanted tickets, that was stressful because inevitably your name would be the last one called. Yeah. Or, or, you know, right. toward, yeah, toward exactly. the last one called. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, those <laughs> lucky people who get first call, they walk out their day starting yeah. and they're happy and yeah. you're just sweating it out. Yeah. Now, normally you got it, but sometimes, yeah. sometimes you didn't. Yeah. So uh, she retired. And like I said, for a little while, she did the uh, computers program thing. And basically, she just started enjoying life. She played golf a lot. Did she? Oh, my, yeah. She loved golf. Uh, she played up a crane. Uh, just telling Doug Denson a funny story about uh, Bill Kendall was the pro of a crane. And uh, he just loved Mom. Well, she was up there one day. She was playing by herself. And there wasn't anybody around. And if you're familiar with the golf course, it's a par three comes over a lake, and then here sits the clubhouse. Well, he was in watching her. She teed off, hit the ball across the lake, started down through the path. Well, she had a, uh, the, the kind of golf cart that you push or pull, you know, on wheels. Sure. But she had an electric one. Okay. So you could guide it remote. You didn't have to push it or pull it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And this is quite a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. So he's watching her. All of a sudden, that thing takes off toward the lake and ends up in a lake. Yeah. And she's chasing it. Oh, and he's God. sitting laughing. You know. <laughs> Video. And, and yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, today it would be. It'd be worth ten thousand. Absolutely. At the, at the least. So yeah. and she finally gets down there and gets it wallered up out of, mm -hmm. <laughs> out of the lake and all wet and everything. And, and uh, she gets up to club and he says she's looking around, you know, to make sure there wasn't anybody seeing her. Mm -hmm. And so she got up to the clubhouse and come in. How you doing? I'm good, Bill. Good. How'd you get wet? <laughs> he knew. He knew. <laughs> did she? Did she fess up? Oh, well, she said, "Damn you, Bill!" 
Because she, she knew he knew. Yeah. And so, the, and I don't know how long it was before I was there again, but he told me about that story. Yeah. So yeah. I had to call her. You failed to tell me about running your golf cart. Or yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, she enjoyed life uh, yeah. after that. Uh, she had a brother that lived in Florida, and she would visit him and his wife. Uh, she had a sister in uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia. Well, she ended up in Florida also, but she was in Par- lived in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So. You've got a sister. Right? I do have a sister. Her and uh, Judy and Tony Walton. Sure. Uh, just visited with them Saturday. They've just moved. They've downsized. They've got their house for sale out here on the east side of town. And they moved into the Golden Pond Apartments out oh. here on the west side. Yeah, so okay. uh, got them a two-bedroom, two-bath, main floor, garage. Yeah, they, won't, they won't regret that. They're tickled yeah. to death. Okay. They are tickled to death. Okay. Uh, she had two children. Uh, mm-hmm. Willie, of course, who uh, we lost back in 2007 or eight. Oh, wow. It's been that yeah, long. it's been that long. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shannon lives in uh, San Antonio. with uh, got three beautiful girls. Uh, her and Ryan Biggs. Sure. So, I didn't know they lived in San Antonio. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, they've been in San Antonio for quite a while. Now. They've been. They did a lot of traveling. They started in, maybe in Brownsville, mm-hmm. Texas. Uh, they were up in the northern Panhandle of Texas. They were in Blaine, Washington, mm. which sits right on the where they were. There was a lake there, and on the other side of the lake was Canada. Wow. So they've been there. Uh, Willie has a daughter also. She goes to school down at uh, WC. She'll she probably be at the ballgame. I hope so. Beautiful yeah. gal. Yeah. Beautiful gal. Yeah. All three of those need my need by great nieces. Yeah. I'm not that old. <laughs> yes, you are. But yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're all beautiful girls. Yeah. Beautiful girls. And super, super intelligent. So. But that's mom and dad's history. Uh, yeah. Dad got to fall on the ball when Jack played. And then uh, he... Uh, Really just he enjoyed it, got to watch them, and then he and Mom got married. And when she went to work at school, uh, uh, he just became more involved. Yeah, yeah, you know? no choice at that point. Yeah, right? I mean, so. you're, you're, you're involved. What about your childhood? What, what, what memories would you think? And let's, let's go the ages, I don't know, let's go, let's go pre-high school. Let's go, uh, let's go junior high. If you, if you were at a Friday night in junior high, were you at home or were you out in the town? It's probably somewhere on my bicycle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably up at the basketball court yeah. <laughs> until it got too dark you couldn't That's see exactly anymore. Right. Yeah. Even uh, in the winter time. Yes. Yes. Uh, the basketball courts near the. the well, center. yes. Yeah. Why were the just sit just west of the police station right. in the parking lot? Yeah. Uh, if not that, if it was in the summer, uh, probably playing baseball, mm-hmm. little league or yeah. or. Uh, the teen league thing. Or playing, playing basketball. <laughs> I mean, that's, More than likely. Yeah. Yeah. At the swimming pool. Yeah. You know, you go out to the swimming pool all day and then play basketball. Yeah. So, Who'd you run around with? Pardon? Who'd you run around with? Oh, my. Well, my first, the first friend that I remember is Tony Page. Tony Page? Yes. Uh, b- because of our, the relationship of our parents. Right. Uh, so Tony, you know, we started school, we're the same age, started school together, uh, stay in touch with him today. He's, of course, he's out on the West, the West Coast of Seattle. Uh, Jeff Meyer, we ran around together. Uh, Dennis Salt, Alan, Alan Crane, mm-hmm. uh, Delbert Walls and I were very close. Uh, still, to this day, we're very close. We grew up in the same church together. And, uh, we did a lot of we did a lot of things together, and we survived. I was going to say it looked like you wanted to say we did a lot of stupid things together, <laughs> yeah, and you well, didn't say it. Well, I, I just assumed people <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> high school. All right. So high school. I know. I know a lot of memories, and we'll, we'll talk about basketball. But uh, who'd you go to the prom with? Mary Ellen Jones. Mary Ellen. Okay. And as far as your high school memories roaming the halls, you were a big guy, right? I, I mean, strong guy. You were a strong guy. Now, so here's what I want to ask you. Back in the day, 
small guys like me, you know, there was what they would call one, initiations, things like this, you know, bullies and things. Were you considered a bully? Probably. <laughs> Probably. And I don't but, know. But, well, but, but I've never I, heard stories. I don't remember initiation. Yeah, yeah I we don't. Didn't, I don't think. It seemed like those were the put the put the heads down the toilets, and I never. Uh, I, never, I, yeah, I, never I don't. I don't yeah, don't, I've heard of that. I just yeah, can't I don't think. It. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. I don't okay. remember it happening to anybody. Okay. Not to say that it didn't. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was probably more just kind of. You know, even yeah. even yeah. with the basketball team. Yeah. You know, there wasn't any hazing or anything like that. Yeah. You know, uh, I I would probably have been considered a bully, but I but mm -hmm. but not one that. Went out I'm not going to stick somebody's head down at all. Yeah, I had. I, I had, might today, but I wouldn't have been. <laughs> I, I had. I was a little guy, right? So I had. Uh, there was only one time I can think of, and, and and this guy was probably a bully back then. Nicest guy in the world today. Nicest yeah. guy in the world. That's normally the case. Sure. But he's big. You remember those big old barrels that they had that housed the basketballs? You put the basketballs in them. Well, somehow I got in there. <laughs> And uh, somebody put me in there and would roll me around, you know, like oh. this. And uh, yeah, you're helpless, yeah. you know, and there's nothing you can do. And that's, that's probably my only time that I felt, okay, that's probably a bullying situation. But, but it happened, it seems like much more back in those days maybe than, right. than what would be today. Basketball, you know, you, you mentioned uh, your relationship with Coach Butcher, Rita Butcher. Obviously, that's through basketball, but... Uh, I know you've got some stories, um, whether it's about Coach Butcher, whether it's about yourself. But tell me some of those stories that you remember from from high school basketball. Well, I had uh, I hurt an, one of my knees in my freshman year of high school, and uh, tried to play through it, couldn't. Uh, ended up on in July one of uh, nineteen seventy one. I had knee surgery yeah. in Bloomington. I always picture you with a big brace on your knee. Bloomington yeah. Hospital. Right. Uh, a doctor with the name Dr. Booze was the uh, orthopedic surgeon for IU Athletics. So Jack, with, with his contacts, that's, that's who we went to. So I got my, I had my first operation July 1st of 71 uh, before going into my sophomore year. So had that surgery, got recovered from it, started the season, uh, hurt my knee, I think right before the sixth game, which was Jasper. We played at Jasper and uh, set that game out. What year was this? It was the 71 72 okay. season. So your sophomore year? My sophomore year. Okay. Brian, Brian was right. a senior. So. Uh, they went to Jasper. We went to Jasper. I set out the game, but they beat Jasper by two points on their home floor, I believe it was. Next game was South Knox at home. Played that game. Blew my knee out. Uh, this was in December, right before Christmas. Uh, they took me in and threw me on the trainer's table and put some ice on my knee, and everybody went back to the ball game. Ball game. So end up having... Uh, Surgery on that knee on December 21st, right before Christmas. Spent Christmas in the hospital. Of course, back then it wasn't like today. You know, I had great big scars on my knees, you know, right. where they cut you open. Right. It's not like the little arthroscopic stuff they do now. Right. So, uh, so I was out for the rest of that season, my sophomore year. Uh, but what I'm getting at is uh, my junior year, uh, we played at Bedford. And they had a pretty good team. They had uh, Jim Pincer was a was a junior my age, big six six boy, and they had uh, Clarence Brown. Remember Clarence? Sure about did. six six or six seven. So we went up there and uh, went up beat them. But uh, in the first quarter, uh, I had I, 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 you know I didn't have a whole lot of athleticism. But I was fundamentally sound. So uh, in the first quarter, of course, every time there's a shot goes up, I'm blocking somebody out. Well, it happened to be Clarence at least three times because they called three fouls on him for jumping over me, pushing me from behind. So he, he sat down the first quarter and uh, didn't play in the second quarter. 
And so we come out, we start the third quarter, and same thing. Within the first four minutes, he had 2,000. He was out of the game. And I ended up fouling out at the end of the game. I don't know, three or four minutes to go. I don't know what it was. But anyhow, the next day, Jack is on the fast break show down on WITZ. Mm -hmm. Right, Sundays? Yes. And uh, so they go, they're go. they going through, you know, how they go through the week of games and stuff. He's talking about the Bedford game. And Jack says, I just, Zim, Bob Zimmer, he says, I just, I, he tells Bob, I, I got something to say here. What's, what's up? He says, well, he said, you know what? Uh, last night, I guess, when, when Flick fouled out, apparently the, uh, the uh, announcer for the Bedford radio station made some kind of comment like, well, Flick just fell out. It's no, you know, no not news anything there. And, <laughs> and, and Jack said, you know, that boy struggled the last two years. He's had two knee surgeries in six months. And he said, I just wonder how good of an announcer that guy would be if he had two throat operations. Yes, yeah. And Zimmer's just immediately went crazy and said, we got to go to a break. we got to go to a break. So, you know, Jax, he, uh, he, 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 was, he always had your back. Oh, yeah. He always yeah. had your back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that was a story that and I, I tell it quite often. But uh, we were at Shoals my senior year. And I, I don't know if it was the first or second Shoals game, but uh, it was late in the game. I was sitting down on the very end of the bench. Mike Walls was next to me. I don't know, but you know, we're up 25 points or whatever. And of course, Jack's still coaching. And he gets up and he's walking down in front of our bench and he's hollering, I don't remember if it was one of the players or the refs or what, and his teeth pop out. <laughs> And he's right. He's down in front of Mike and I when that happens. And does he mind telling you this? You telling this story? I told it at the banquet in, 19, <laughs> well, in 2012. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> and I hope he did. Yeah, yeah. But he caught him on the first bounce, <laughs> stuck him in his pot, <laughs> stuck him in his coat pocket, and then he sits down next to me. Yeah. You know. Oh my. We're with no teeth. I'm having a terrible. Yeah. I'm having a terrible time. He finally gets up and goes down the other end, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, Mike Walsh told me later that my eyes look like two pee holes in a snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> but I did tell that at the uh, pre-sectional banquet in 2012, and I just I don't understand how come that story in any in, in any of his books. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> you know, actually, actually, that's that's a terrific story, and I am kind of surprised that it's not right. Because yeah. Coach Butcher. Yeah, he he was demanding, but uh, he could make fun of himself. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah, he was fine. Yeah, he was fine. So you were you, you said not so much athletically gifted, but fundamental, and and you know, when, and then you talked about Clarence Brown being over the back. I think of you when you watch games today, because you were in my mind when you talk about screening out. You know, Wayne Flick knew how to screen out, and uh, I'm sure that. Time and time again, when you watch games, not just today, I mean, it might have been 25, 30 years ago, it's like, I don't understand. I, I get so aggravated. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. My wife will say, what is wrong with you? I'm like, oh, oh, you know, yeah. watching something on TV. It's because it's so simple. It, it, it's teachable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of those things that you'll want to to want to do. You have to yeah. want. You have to, to want it. to do that. You have to want and, the ball. You know, I knew a long time ago that I wasn't going to be a scorer, you know, I wasn't going to be the greatest shooter or anything. I had to, I had to find a niche and one of them was rebounding and playing defense. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, if, if you can rebound and play defense, you're going to play a lot. You're going to play a lot. Right. You know, and I hate that that's going away because the kids today, all they want to do is dunk and shoot three pointers, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, and and probably, well, we know you guys, you and Brian talked about it in your in his interview, Lee Cavanaugh. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you learn early. Of course, what what would you know? What would this program have been if it wasn't for Lee? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just can't imagine. And his he won what six hundred and some games or something. Too many. Seven hundred, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I knew it at one time, but. Uh, you know, the fundamentals that he instilled in us, he and, and Tim too, you know, but uh, that's that's what made him go to basketball. Yeah. You know, uh, that's <laughs> when uh, 
if you recall when they honored uh, when the Pacers honored Jack. Yep. And uh, one of the sports writers in Indianapolis found out about Larry Bird's relationship to the Lions, and they interviewed him. And uh, they asked him, said, you know, we understand you played against Lagodi and blah, blah, blah. See, I said, you know, Lagodi didn't beat themselves. He said they were so fundamentally sound. You know, they just didn't beat themselves. Right. You had to figure out how to beat them. Yeah. You know. And that's from maybe the most fundamental player in the history of the a- game. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And the best part of that interview was the, the, uh, the uh, interviewer said, well, I understand you didn't beat, never did beat Lagodi. Yeah. He says, that bother you? He said, every damn day. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not as much today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's fine. He's fine. But you were involved in that game, right? With uh, yes, that was, yes, that was our senior year. Yeah, your that senior year. Yes. I mean, that's probably, outside of the state tournament games, probably the most memorable game yes. in Ligoti basketball history. Yes. So from your perspective, tell me a little bit about it. Well, uh, you know... Uh, I think Jeff Meyer said it best that, that uh, you know, we were go to, you know, mm-hmm. it was just another game for us. We went over there knowing we were going to win mm-hmm. when it was never in, anything else ever in our mind, you know. Uh, but I think what surprised us more than anything was just the atmosphere of that night. Yeah, it's crazy. Were you, were you, I you, was listening to it on the radio. Okay, okay. Well, I, I, you know, uh, and people laugh at me when when I when I tell them how many people there were in that place that mm-hmm. night. I mean, you know, the aisles were full. It's a it's a gym just like Lagodi's right. built down in the ground. The aisles up and down were full. They were four and five deep sitting on the floor. Yes. Yeah, and it was so hot in there that the iron beams started sweating. Mm-hmm. And they had mops. They had to come out on the floor every three or four minutes and mop the floor. I just, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah. Even, I mean, you know, we'd played in front of the full house of Washington. Right. But it's built for that many people. Exactly, yeah. You know, this yeah. was twice as many people yeah. as what's supposed to be in that place. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I don't know. I just, it, we didn't know then that now, almost sure. 50 years later, mm-hmm. that there was going to be one of the greatest ever, you know, I, but... Uh, it's just an honor and a privilege that we were there at that time, but didn't know what it was going to be in history books. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty cool, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that like I know, said, that's. I, I, I'm thinking about this. Too. You can't go anywhere. If somebody hadn't heard of Ligoti. Seems like it, and it's because of the basketball program. Right. right. You know, it's not because of the shirt factory. And sometimes it's because we beat them in the tournament. And, uh, yes. Oh, you know, then there's a little swear word or two, and yeah. here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. I just, uh, the memories of high school basketball are just, uh, that's great. Yeah, Some I mean, the winning the sectional time. as a senior. Yes. Had to have been terrific. Yes. Um, yes. How far did you go that year? Lost in the regional. We got beaten in the regional. But my junior year, and... Uh, Senior year, we got beat both years by Bedford. Bedford, yes, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure, but excuse me, about '73. Well, like we did. That was my junior year. We yeah. we beat Bedford at Bedford, and then my senior year, we beat Bedford 12 or 15 points at Lagodi, and then both years we got beat by him in the in the afternoon game of section or the region. So when you think about after high school. I mean, Indiana State Trooper, you, you've been somehow or other with the Indiana State Police for, well, up until even now. But when did you think about becoming an Indiana State Trooper? Was that something you wanted to do growing up? <laughs> when I was a kid, little kid, a good friend of the family was Donnie Jackson. Donnie Jackson, yeah. And... Uh, Donnie was a 1960 grad of the of Ligoti, and uh, he was good friends with Dad. And uh, he was, like I say, he was a real good friend of the family. He was like a big brother to me. And in 1964, he became a state trooper. And the first time he drove his state police car to our house. 
I knew what I was going to do really? when I grew up. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted to be. From Well, I would have been eight years old in 1964. Wow. Okay. And I saw that police car. And I, I got, that's, that's me. Yeah. And, of course, you know, he took me everywhere with him. And uh, I, I don't know if you remember the single bubble state police cars. Sure. Do sure. you? Yeah. Just the yeah. Just yeah. bubble gum sure. machine on Absolutely, top. yeah. Well, that's what they were then. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I came on a department in uh, 78. And I was so excited because I was going to get one of those state police cars with yeah. a single bubble on. And they had just started to switch to the ones with the double bubbles on a rack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean so you didn't get the bubble? You didn't get the single bubble? Not then. Okay. That was in September. Yeah. In December, uh, we had an ice storm. I'd had my car, uh, well, I got my first car. I got the car in September 78. In December, we had an ice storm, and uh, I was going to Interstate 64 and working in an accident, and a drunk hit me in the back while I was sitting parked. Okay. Okay. I go get my next car a week later, and it's a single bubble. Yeah. So I did get the And you were okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I want to ask you about, because I, I saw you talked about Shoot, almost to the day. But back in February of '78, you you were recruit. Yes. And you talked about how grueling that was, and that people would drop out and drop out. W what does it take in the recruiting process? At boot camp. It sounds like almost. it is. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I, I think it's a little different now. But uh, in well, I turned 21 in January of '77. And uh, so uh, that summer, I think in May of 77, I drove to uh, Jeffersonville High School to take the initial uh, test, book test, paper test for the state police. They did two sessions that day in Evansville, and there were 2,500 at each session. They had one in Indianapolis, and then they had one up South Bend or Gary, Illinois. So, I don't know, there was probably close to 10,000 or over that put in that took that test for an application. That was in May. And then you got notified if you passed the test, and then you had to do a uh, polygraph test, which I can't believe I passed it, but I did. Hey. Uh, <laughs> that's why I don't put any faith in them. <laughs> <laughs> then you do a physical test, uh, psychological. I passed that one too. That's why I don't have any faith in it. <laughs> uh, and then in August, I was notified uh, they had chosen two classes. One started in maybe September or October, I don't know. And then the second class, which was I was in, started in February of 78. And it was uh, February the 13th, which was Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it was on a Sunday. Was it? Yeah. 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 So uh, it, you you get up there, you know, and of course right away it's uh, it's I, I've not been through basic, but you know the, the 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 in the movies where you see the DI screaming and hollering at the guys. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what it was like. So just like Police Academy, the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we Maybe didn't not quite. we didn't have anybody that can make those sounds. No. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we had a big. There was a big snowstorm the first week, and they took us out and run us like seven or eight miles, you know, in in, in the snowstorm. And it was foot deep, probably still blowing. You know, we get back in the gymnasium and there's people laying everywhere. You know? Sure. And uh, I think seven of them left that night. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'd probably one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably one. It's a special breed for sure. But but you were accepted. Yes. Yeah. Uh, started school February 13th. Uh, we graduated May the 26th, I believe, of 78. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, do you remember the coal strike? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I remember it affecting the basketball tournament. It all comes back to basketball. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, it affected us. Uh, 
normally, like our first three or four weeks, we would go up on Sunday. We'd get out on Friday evening, go home, come back Sunday. Kept doing that. Well, because of the cold strike, after about the third or fourth week, we didn't go back until Monday morning, and we got out Thursday night. So they shortened, they shortened the days, but they lengthened the days, you, the hours you work during the day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So and then maybe the last two or three weeks, then we got back to the regular hours. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, graduated May the 20th. Well, oh, they have a they have a call, what they call a wish list. They bring you in about three weeks before you're done. And uh, you give them the three districts that you want to go to. I was going to ask you where you were. They, were, they gave you three districts that you, you would like to go to. Mm -hmm. And back then, it wasn't real common for them to send you back to your home district. So uh, when I sent mine in, I put Bloomington. Seymour and Evansville. Of course, Jasper's right in the middle, but I was banking on not being sent back to Jasper. So they come in maybe a week before we graduate and they say, uh, all right, you know, we're going to tell everybody where they're going. It's, it was, uh, we started with 47, seven dropped out the first week. We replaced those seven and we ended up with 33. So they said, uh, two, of the 33, didn't get any of your three choices. And I uh, thought, these poor guys. <laughs> well, I was one up. Yeah. I was one up, and they sent me to Jasper. Oh. <laughs> so it I, all know, worked out. Yeah, it worked out great. You know, yeah. so I got sent to Jasper, um, came down here. Well, that was that's Memorial Day weekend. So they told us we didn't have to report until Tuesday. So. Uh, Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day at 78, we reported to the post of Jasper. Uh, ended up, uh, we'll go, you go through 12 more weeks of riding with, you know, you ride with the detectives and the truck guys and uh, everything. You do, you do a little bit of everything. And then uh, you, you go through all that and then you get your car and it kick you out on your own. So from, it was end of May, 1st of June until, I don't remember the exact date, First week or so in September, then we finally uh, got our own cars. And Do you remember the first traffic ticket you gave out? No. 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 Okay. Because I thought that might be something where, as you're an officer, you're thinking, here we go. You know, well, I mean, this is this. this well, is... see, that, you, you do that when you're with a trooper trainer, even. Okay. You know, you I go, got you, sure. when you, you know, you get in your yeah. trooper trainer and, and he says, okay, you know, and, and, and you watch him, right. you observe him, right. and then, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks or so, then he say, here's the keys, you know, and then it gets down to where uh, when you meet him, he's in plain clothes and you're in uniform, so you're on your own, Okay. you know, unless mm -hmm. it turns to something real bad, you know, but, uh, so, but I, I don't even remember that first one. Uh, and I definitely don't remember my first one. Yeah. I, I, I remember I was riding with Don Smoot, who lived in Washington. And uh, I, I mean, it was in the afternoon, late after, early afternoon, three or four o'clock. And they sent us to a fatal accident in Dubois. Right when you're coming into Dubois, where the uh, train tracks cross, yep. okay, uh, there was a fatal accident there. So we get down there, well, there was a train across the road. And there's a Kent feed truck. Who has Kent feed truck? Matt Alex. Right. Okay. Right. right. There's a Kent feed truck up against this train. My first thought is, oh no. Yeah. So we get out. I'm driving. We get out and we go up. I crawl up on the truck. And I look in. All I can see is the top of his fuzzy head. Curly hair. I thought it was one of my Matt Angler buddies. He didn't have an odd thing. It was a truck, mm -hmm. but it was an employee from right. from Dubois. Yeah. That's yeah. Did you? How many times, if at all, did you have to inform a family member that their family member didn't make it? I don't know how many times, but.
but I can tell you that I did it by myself one time. And that was the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, I put mine on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> Just takes care of everything. <laughs> but I'm sure Tracy Baker's probably giving you a call. And, you know. I talked to him on the way down there just so yeah. he wouldn't call me. Yeah, and, 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 and right in the middle of the most serious of conversations. Uh, but, but, it, but it is. I promised it's myself serious. that I would never do it alone again. Yeah. Uh, down at the 231 in the interstate. What is it, Shell Station down there in, at, in Spencer County? Spencer County. You know what I'm talking about? South of, south of Huntingburg, just north of Dale. I'm not sure. Okay. I know where you're talking about. Okay. I'm not sure about the station. It, was on, it happened on 231, right at I-64. And uh, there was a young boy from Du Bois County was killed. Mm -hmm. I think he was 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. wow. So I, I get the name and an address. And it's got an address in Jasper. And it, it's like a 215 and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when I see his name, I think, okay, that's a Du Bois name. This address is a half. This is an apartment in Jasper where he lives. So I'll go, I'll go find out if there's anybody there that can tell me where. So I go up, and it's, it's a side street. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I just park right in the middle of the street, hop out of the car, and run and knock on the door. A lady answers the door. This is, yes? You have a son named Bill? Yes. I said, can I step inside? We need to talk. He's been involved in an accident. She said, sure, come on in. She said, is he okay? And I said, no, he's not. She said, is he dead? I said, he was killed in the wreck. And she went out like a light. Cut her head on the edge of a... Right, card table, sitting down low. And then I hear some in the kitchen shuffling. I look up. Here's her dad. Her dad. About nine years old. Right. Well, he starts screaming at me because what did I do to her? Right. I'm on the radio hollering for city police and ambulance and everything else. It turned out okay. But that's when I decided then I'll never do it again by myself. And from that time forward, the first thing I would do if when I found out that I was going to have to do that, it's called for the one for chaplains. We had chaplains around the district mm -hmm. and get the chaplain there with you. Did you ever come upon a fatality, and, and we don't need names, but of someone you knew or the family that you knew? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I can't imagine Wayne just whenever, if you know them or not, you're driving and you're going to knock on a door and tell somebody that. A loving, living person is no longer living. I mean, I, I know you, even if you're trained for that. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's no training. There's no that. training. You know, and, and that's got to eat at you, yeah. I, I would think. Right? Well, it does. And that's it, it, one of the best things the state police did while I was around was back in probably, I don't know, 94, 95, they started a, uh, uh, I can't. Uh, Chris, critical Incident Stress Management, CISM, and it was for PSD and PTSD. And uh, I went through the training, and uh, they picked, I don't know, maybe one from each district or something around the state. We all went through the training up at Ball State. And uh, it was so that we could do debriefings. And uh, when I got back, the lieutenant, he said, how's it going? Is it good? And I said, yes. I said, here's the problem. I said, we won't have a problem with young guys. They'll accept it. I said, the old guys, we won't get them to partake in it because they're too tough. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And, and, and I understood that, but uh, we had a lot of success with it. And I was surprised uh, at even the, some of the older guys that accepted it. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew there would be some that, that wouldn't. And that, you know, yeah, okay, I can't force you to, but uh, that, uh, yeah, that was one of the best things they ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, it does help you deal with it. You know, there's somebody, you go talk to somebody. Uh, one thing I've learned through that and being part of that group, if we had a shooting, if we had a trooper that was involved in an officer-involved shooting, 
the first thing I did was get a hold of the closest trooper that had been involved in a shooting to get here for that guy, to support that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can sit here and say, yeah, I understand it. No, I don't. I have never shot anybody. Right. But if you had, you could relate to this guy and he'll look, he'll believe you. He'll trust you because he knows. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's how you do some of that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, with, you know, the fatal accident thing, you know, most of us have been through that. So if it's a young person on their first fatal, you know. Did you ever have to shoot anybody? No. No? Never did? Drew a gun one time. What's the most harrowing experience you had as a police officer? Are you thinking because there's there's many? No, or, or I can't. In your case, I don't, not, I, you know, okay. I tell these young guys today, when you come on the bar, Write a diary. Yeah. Keep notes. Yeah. I wish I'd have kept notes. Well, well, in your day, correct me if I'm wrong. It was always dangerous being a police officer, but with today, you, you can be in any small town, any part of the country, and yeah, anything can that's, happen at any time, right? It, yes. Yes. You know, and and that that's right. You know, I when I worked, you know, you, you didn't think about stopping a car at night. Uh, it, and, and today it has to be on the mind of every single time, yes. right? I mean, would you agree yes. with that? If, if you were in that role today? Uh, it, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and in the academy, you're taught that every car you stop, you have to expect and act like they're going to try to kill you. Okay. That's how you approach it. Okay, and that's what you're taught. That's what you're taught because okay. if you don't, right. if you don't think that when you're walking up to a car at 2 right. o'clock in the morning, if they want to kill you, they're going to. Yep. Right. So... Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I got out of a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, tw I've, I've been retired 13 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so these last 13 years, how much it's changed? I mean, it was getting bad when I left. Mm -hmm. But what it's changed in the last 13 years is crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just, I, I don't know. Uh, so, you, I, so you got out of the role of a trooper. But you stayed with the Indiana State Police for these many years since then, right? Well, the, the Alliance. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, well, there's, a, there's a group that was formed in 1974 called the Indiana State Police Alliance. And it's, a, it's an organization that represents the troopers in the state of Indiana. Uh, they, do, uh, they, they lobby for them in the legislature. Uh, anything, you know, they provide benefits. Uh, death benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide uh, educational benefits for children. Uh, uh, just different opportunities and benefits. It's kind of like a union, only we're not a union, you know. Uh, and w one of the one of the uh, details that I was detailed to as a trooper. I don't remember the exact year. Probably two thousand. 2001 or 2002, I got a call, excuse me, on a Friday afternoon, and it was a Major McKee. I don't know if you remember Monty McKee or not. The name, yes. Monty for was uh, from Odin, played basketball okay. and football okay. up at uh, North Davis. All right. We were the same age. Uh, he came on the class before me. and uh, But anyhow, he was a major. I was, I'm sitting at home on a Friday, and he called me in. He said, I need a favor. I said, what's up, Major? He said, uh, I need somebody to work playing clothes legislative security. I said, okay, what's that consist of? Well, you, you're down at the house, down at the state capitol with them every day. They're in session, you know, and uh, be two of you. I said, okay. You can wear a coat and tie. I said, okay. I said when do I be there? He said, Monday morning. I said, all right. So I had to go out and buy a sport coat and tie. <laughs> You're not a coat and tie type I, guy. I, I'm not a coat and tie type of guy. So I went out and bought a couple pair of dress pants, mm -hmm. and I spent uh, let's see, that was that was one or two, oh one or oh two, and then in oh uh, six up and through oh six, so four or five years, uh, I worked during the legislative session during legislative security, and uh, made a lot of a lot of contacts. And uh, so in 2006, 
the uh, president of the alliance, uh, everybody that's a member of the alliance is active. Once you retire, if you retire as a member of the alliance, then you're a lifetime member. So the president of the alliance was retiring. And somebody came up with the great idea that since I had been working in the legislature and had a bunch of contacts that I'd be a good president for the alliance. <laughs> so they came to me and asked me if I would do it on yeah, being the being the guy I am. I did, you know. Yeah. So I and I enjoyed that very much. Being the president mm -hmm. of the alliance. You have to be an active member. And uh, so I did that. Went through three or four legislative mm -hmm. sessions, then I retired in uh, when I retired in uh, 2010, the reason I retired is because the executive director retired and the board came to me and said, would you want to do this? I wasn't even thinking about leaving. They said, would you want to do this? So I sat down and thought about it and looked at it and yeah, what the hell. So I went ahead and retired and became the executive director then. So, but, but through that, uh, there's a group called the National Troopers Coalition. And uh, I don't know, they've been around since the early 70s, mid 70s. And uh, it's 44, 44 states and 48 or 49 organizations uh, that are represented by the National Troopers Coalition, over 40,000 state policemen from around the country. And uh, they have a con two conferences a year, one in the spring, one in the fall. and. Uh, I got to enjoy that for 10 years, uh, going to those, made a lot of good contacts. Ended up being, after I retired, uh, I, was, I stayed with the MTC. I was the uh, uh, chairman of the uh, National Troopers Coalition Charitable Foundation. So, uh, but I met a lot of people through that from all over the country. Got to visit the White House. I had a, had a uh, uh, meeting with... Uh, George W. Did you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of opportunities that were presented yeah. to me through the Indiana State Police yeah. that the you just you can never mm -hmm. you can you just can't imagine. Yeah. You know, it, it, when C Katrina hit uh, New Orleans down south, uh, the state police sent sixty troopers, and I was in the first group that went. We left on Sunday morning, uh, Labor Day weekend, actually, my sister's birthday. Uh, we went down for two weeks. They sent another 60 down. We came home. They sent another 60 hit down. They came home, and then we're done. But uh, that was an experience I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. I bet. Uh, you just can't imagine the devastation from a hurricane. Yeah, I, it you is. Know, I mean, yeah. we see it from a tornado, but... Yeah. <laughs> You're not fully retired today? No, I'm. Well, I, I work for Alliance Security, but I'm retired from the state police. Right. But right. I, okay, I work more hours now than I did when well, I was you, with you the state find, police. You, you find your way up here quite a bit, <laughs> right? Uh, well, I worked until uh, eight o'clock this morning. Oh, did you? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. From what time? Uh, midnight. Oh my god! And then you drove the two plus hours. I went home. I went home, changed clothes. Sit down a little bit. Okay. All right. I go back at midnight tonight. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> but he does come back a lot, and and, and, and for it's nothing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. Yeah. I'll, I'll get tired of my drive home. You know, and I live eight blocks away. But uh, I'll take a nap, get ready for the game tonight. You know. But. Uh, he does come back a lot because he, he's so giving to the community. And, and, and obviously, what I know you from, Wayne, the Butcher G Golf Tournament. Uh, yep, what, what we got here? Butcher G Bread Alumni Golf Outing. Oh, okay. Good plug for that. Good plug for that. Well, tell us how you got involved in that. I know that's an interesting story, too. Well, it is. You know, uh, this will be the 20th anniversary, actually, for the golf outing this year. So It's amazing. 20 years ago. Uh, junior. Jack and Charlotte Meyer. Uh, Junior went to Jack and talked to him and said, you know, uh, I want to do something to give back to our community. You know, but, and we, we were both, you know, in the same boat and this community took care of us. So they came up with this grand idea of a golf outing. 
and uh, Charlotte stepped up to help them. So uh, 20 years ago, they started the golf outing, and when when they started, their goal was to do it for 10 years. And which is a lot. Yes, it is. Well, that's what Junior said. He said most of these things. You know, you start in the last 10, 12 years, and then they fizzle out. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he's right, you know, most, most places. But Ligoti's not most places. Right. So after the 10th uh, year, uh, asked Tracy. I said, but we can't let this go. This, this means too much to too many people. You've seen it, you know. Oh, yes. So... He said, yeah, you're right. So before I even called Junior, that was a ball game. I saw the Jones girls. Mary Ellen, Amy, and Ann. I got a corner. I said, uh, if somebody wanted to take over the golf outing, would you guys stick around and help? And I, well, <laughs> depends on who it is. <laughs> well, that, that makes a difference. I got it. I yeah. got it. Yeah. I said, well. <laughs> then despite that, they did it anyway. <laughs> they did it anyway. Uh, I said, well, Tracy and I don't want to go away. But, yeah. you know, we're not going to do it by ourselves. We right. need somebody that's been there, yeah. done that, you know. And they said, we'd love to do it. Mm-hmm. So then I called Junior. And I tell this story every year at the alumni bank. But people probably get tired of hearing it. But so I called Junior and I said, "Hey, Junior, uh, what if what if we found somebody to keep this golf out and going? You know, like, what if?" He said, "You think you can?" Well, I think so. He said, "Well, who? Who the hell want to do that?" <laughs> I said, "Well, how about me and Tracy?" And he started laughing. <laughs> so he said, "Man, he said if you guys want to do it, go for it." And uh, here we are, ten years later, and we've given we've given away fifty one thousand dollars scholarships. Yeah, that's amazing. In in twenty years, and well, actually in eighteen years, because the first two years of golf outing, they didn't give away scholarship. They were raising money. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and they start out with just two a year, which which is fine. Right. But then. Uh, Tracy and I did it, and it just, it, 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 I, I don't know, it just, it just keeps getting bigger. And we finally, the last two years, we had, we had to limit it to 36 teams. And that's tough because it's hard to get a new team. You know, if, if somebody's having a 25th or a 50th anniversary uh, class reunion, right. if they want to bring a team in, yeah. it's like, you know, we got to figure out yeah. what to do here. It's so, a good problem. It is. It's, it's a good problem, problem to have. Yeah. So... Uh, that's how we got into it. Uh, you know, this this community, and I think we found that out this summer, some with uh, with the lands deal. You know, how close knit and supportive they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, it's to the point now that it's pretty simple because you know we make two or three dips down, trips down in the spring for our sponsors. We, one thing we've done, and, and we said that's what we were going to start with, we're not going to send out a letter. We go talk to them. We sit down and talk to them. And it's bad because when you go out to Strong Insurance Agency, you spend half your day there yeah. <laughs> with reps. Yeah. So, but that's how, you know, we, it's face-to-face. Yeah. We go talk to people. Yeah. We, we, talk, we, mm-hmm. we, talk to every, we talk to every sponsor face-to-face. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last couple of years, Brenda Mall and Mike Engelman have helped us. But, you know, with the sponsor stuff like that, uh, the volunteers we have, you know, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Shirley McAtee and Amy, uh, Shirley hadn't missed one yet. She's been to every, every one of them, all 19 of them so far. Yeah. Uh, I, Amy else. might have missed one or two, I don't know. But uh, the, 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 the volunteers that we have, the sponsors, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Charlotte Meyer. Wouldn't she be a good guest oh, on something? Oh, my. Talk about a positive impact yes. to the community. Absolutely. And, uh, and, 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 and there wasn't any reason for her to, to get involved with Jack and Junior. I guess maybe Junior was, well, she would have been what? 
she would have been Junior's aunt by marriage or something all okay. the time. You know, she, uh, her sister was Connie's mother. Okay. So, yeah. but, you know, she didn't have to get involved in that. She was retired and joined life. Yeah. But she enjoyed doing that stuff. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Uh, how, how did you and, and Tracy become such, I don't even know how to describe it, friends. <laughs> I'll just say friends. But uh, I don't think you were best friends in high school, right? But uh, we were pretty good pretty friends. Good friends. Okay, school, yeah. so you've had a lifelong friendship. Oh, yeah. But it's a friendship yeah. like I've never seen. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> my mutt and Jeff, the frickin' frack. And, yeah. I, and I say that because when you see them, it's barbs, barbs yeah. here and then a bigger barb here and one right back at you. But is that fair? Oh yeah, and, oh, yeah. and the rides down yeah. and back have to be uh, oh, really we, interesting. We have a blast. Yeah. We have a blast. But Tracy's another one that gives so much back to yes, the community. This and also the alumni banquet, and, and uh, I got involved in the alumni banquet last year, and uh, enjoyed it. It was great. But I was in Savannah, Georgia, on vacation, so I missed a meeting, and I get a call while I'm on vacation. Hey, Greg, we just elected you president. I was happy as could be because I know what a president does. <laughs> he just tells other people what to do, and it worked out pretty well. So I appreciate that, Wayne and Drew. But again, there's another something else that you, you're involved with, um, the, the alumni banquet, very heavily involved. And in. uh, why is that so important to you? Well, I went to the very first one. The very first one, and we've had, oh my gosh, I, I think should this know is that. going to be 48. It's a 48. Okay. Uh, I think it's 40, in the 40. Meant we missed one. Yeah. We got shut down because of the pandemic. Right. I think this is going to be 48. Yeah. But uh, one very first one down in Maryland, and I went to the. Uh, was it Huntingburg? No, the no. first one was on the north side of Jasper, uh, next to Jerry's. Yep. That's uh, that's. <laughs> is it car no, carriage? Engine? That's what it was. But you know what? Oh, I should yeah, know that I, because today's date. I know I'm bringing it back to me, <laughs> but at that very place, I can't remember. Somebody will, <laughs> but. On this date, 41 years ago, I proposed to my wife downstairs there at the restaurant. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So I should know the name. <laughs> but anyway, somebody will know, and we'll think but of that, it. That's why that that and then, you know, I was messaging back and forth with a lady the other evening, and uh, her son's a. Uh, one of the former ball players here in town, and she thanked me for uh, being uh, a friend of his. I'm not going to say role model, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. But she thanked me for that. Right. And I told her, I said, you know, it takes a village. And I said, I'm just paying it back. That's what I got. You yeah. know, I got from Donnie Jackson. You know. Uh, Dallas Bauer, Bob Summers, all those guys. My dad, all those guys. You know, they started the linebackers. Mm -hmm. And look at the linebackers today, what they do. Yeah. You know, so I, and, and I think this summer you asked me when we were at Montgomery at the golf outing, you said, why? I said, Lagodi. Yeah. That's but, just but 100 it. miles away. It's still Lagodi. It, it's still Lagodi. <laughs> In, in you know, hometown. Uh, you know, people say, "Where are you from?" I'm still in Lagodi. Right. I live in Fishery, but I'm from Lagodi. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Kelly loves it down here. Yeah. She, you know, she grew up in Indianapolis, and she loves coming down here. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about Kelly a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Kelly's your wife. Yes. Of how long now? <sighs> you would have to ask. You told me 2015. <laughs> yeah. November was, uh, this past November was seven years. Okay. And um, you, you said she loves to come down here, but she's from where? Indianapolis. She's from in Indianapolis. Went to Ritter High School. Went to Ritter High School. Yes. Okay. So yes. enjoys the small town she vibe. Okay. She absolutely. Now, she don't want to live here because you got to travel to the shop. <laughs> you do. You know. But, well, now we've got some. Yeah, but, you're right. But she loves, she absolutely loves yeah. coming down here. Yeah. She just. From the first time, uh -huh. she, just, she loves it, and she loves everybody here. Yeah. And you know what? If I don't bring her down here with me, yeah. I gotta sneak in and out because <laughs> if people see me and she's not with me, yeah. and I catch hell. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Uh, children, grandchildren. Oh, go ahead. Let's, let's talk about. Uh, yeah, I got. Let's see. Okay, I have uh, four children. Stephanie, who will be 
This is hard to believe. Yeah. 49. Oh, my. In November. Goodness. Yeah. 49 in yeah. November. She lives in Rochester, New York. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Gavin. Gavin will be 43 in April. He lives in uh, Brownsville, Texas. Tyler. He's got him spread out. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. Tyler will be 35 in May. He lives in Jasper. That's where he was born. Mm -hmm. And then Trevor will be, uh, let's see, he was born in 91. So he'll be uh, 32 in March. And he lives in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then uh, Kelly has two children, my, my stepchildren, Danny. Danny lives in Fishers near us, and Caleb, and he lives there close to us also. Uh, grandchildren, uh, Stephanie has two boys, Dakota and Casey. Tyler has three boys, uh, Tyler, Cooper, and Peyton. <laughs> no, Gavin has three boys, Tyler, Cooper, and Peyton. And then Tyler has a little baby girl. And Trevor doesn't have any yet so, that I know of. And Danny, uh, Kelly's daughter, has a little, a little daughter, a 10-year-old, uh, Adrian. And she lives with us. Oh, more, yeah. More than part yes, of mine. you brought her down. Yes. And, oh, yes. What a pleasure. Uh, yeah. She is... Uh, she, she's... she's, uh, she's uh, she was our flag holder, wasn't yes, she? She was. Yes, she was. Yes, she was at the alumni Stars match. and stripes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's very sweet. So yeah. that's my kids and grandkids. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, I have been blessed. You've been blessed. I've been blessed. Yeah. Uh, you know, my mom and my dad. You know, I want to tell a couple of stories sure. about them. Uh, dad uh, did all his vehicle trading stuff through Joe Birch. Who was he was a Chrysler salesman down at Sternberg's in Jasper, and there's a little white house that sits behind where the subway is. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. There's, a, there's yeah. a there's an alley there's a, right there. There's an alley, mm -hmm. and then that first little white house. Yep. That's where I lived until I was three years old. Is that right? And Joe Birch and Eileen lived in the brick house next door. They owned it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so dad, dad bought all his cars from Joe. He did all his trading with Bake, Baker, Byrne, at the Texaco station. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tracy's dad, when he was sick, uh, he was home bedridden, and uh, he called the house. Dad answered, and he said, Tracy around there? No, I haven't seen him. What do you need? He said, well, he said, he's supposed to be with one. He said, yeah, it's hard to tell him where we're at. He said, what do you need, Bake? He said, well, I was going to have him bring me an ice uh, milkshake from uh, Dairy Master. Okay. All right. He said, well, if I see him, I'll tell him. Said, okay. My dad proceeds to go out to Dairy Master and get a milkshake and take it to bake. <laughs> you know, that's dad. Yeah. You know, that's dad. He just, you know, he, uh, you know, he had a motor home. And he would take, you know, the, they used to take the boys after they got eliminated in tournament. They'd take them to the regional and semi state and state. Oh. He'd load them up in that motorhome. Yeah. Ask Eric Ackerman. Every time I see Eric, he talks about the yeah. trip in the in the motorhome down to Evansville in the semi state. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he loved basketball. He would do anything. Dad would have done anything for anybody. And that's where it comes from with me. You know, yeah. he, he did so much stuff that people didn't know about. You know, that the only thing that with me is because it's a golf tournament that everybody's out there on, you know. But well, didn't you have something to do with the police escort from the 2012 team from maybe the hotel to the arena? You think? That's what I heard. <laughs> That's the story I've heard. Maybe, maybe, maybe Indiana State Police shouldn't know about this. <laughs> I can tell you one better than that. In 75, I don't know if it was the morning game or the night game at the semi-state. They got to the Roberts Stadium and realized the balls were still at the hotel. <laughs> and it was Fisher's responsibility. Who? who? Steve. Steve Fisher. Steve, Fisher. <laughs> Steve was telling me a story. So he was like, what am I going to do? You know? so, yeah. 
he says, Don and Donnie has escorted him. Tally Jackson? Yeah, to the stadium. Mm -hmm. So no, I said, Donnie, he said, and that's all we still in the hotel. I said, so they get Donnie's car. Back to the hotel, back to the yeah. stadium. You know, nobody ever knew the nobody difference. Ever knew. <laughs> nobody ever knew the difference. That's amazing. Uh, so, you know, but yeah, they, you know, I don't, people don't need to know everything I do. No, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably good. We you just know, need to know the good things you do, <laughs> you know, which, which are plenty. Uh, Mom, mm -hmm. and, and, and I told this story at her, her uh, funeral, and it was reminded me of it again the other day. Uh, Ann Ozer. Yes. Uh, Kyle was her oldest, the boy? I don't know. I don't know uh, her family. She was, she was a teacher at Lagoon. Yeah. She's, uh, matter of fact, she did her student teaching my senior year. Okay. And I tell her the reason she lasted 30 some years is because she got through us. We were good training for it. Was all, it was all uphill <laughs> from there. Yeah. But uh, she was in a hospital. She had uh, her first child. And uh, her mom was visiting her. And, and she looked up and in walks mom and Ann Ackman. Her mom was carrying a big sack with her. So and they sat down there. And, you know, and, and uh, after a little bit, her mom says, well, I better get out of here and let you guys visit. You know, so she leaves. And, Mom gets up over and shuts the door. Back over and starts unloading this bag. She's gonna make margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So mom and Ann Ozer and Ann yeah. Ackerman sit in the hospital room after the, the yeah. day after Ann Ozer had a child and, mm -hmm. and drank margaritas. Yeah. Again, no video. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the side, definitely the side of mom. The people didn't know. Right, right. You know, they knew the the, the stern right. school marm part. You know, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. they they were they were a lot different. You know, I, Dad, like I said, Dad was quiet. And Mom let you know what she was thinking, where you wanted to know her. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. That's where you got it from. Well, <laughs> don't, don't, don't don't you think that describes you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so I always give a form, you know, anything that we haven't talked about that, that, that wasn't brought up or that you would like to add, anything at all, it's your form. I, you know, just people, I, yeah, I get asked a lot, you know, why do you do this, you know, back and forth and and this stuff. And I, it's, I, I, you asked me last spring at the golf outing, I said, it's Ligoti. You know, there's not a, there's a lot of small towns around. And and I'm sure they have camaraderie and support and stuff, but it just you know, like I said, it takes a village, and, and I'm just paying it back. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's that I have affected, you know, somewhere back in the last 25 years or so, they're going to be doing the same thing. So you know, I, I've talked to, I've already got three or four guys lined up to take over the golf outing. Good. So. They're going to be doing the same thing, right? You know, yeah. uh, I just, I, you know, I want to thank you for doing this. This is a great thing uh, that that you got. From, I can't believe Mark thought of it. I, you know, how did yeah. that come from? I don't know. Somebody surely gave him the idea. Must have. <laughs> Must have. <laughs> but he did, and uh, and I thank him for it. And he and he knew that this would be something that was much bigger than I would ever thought yeah, it would be. Right, and, exactly. and I'm not saying it's something out of this world, but it's but it's something that's been very positive for people. Uh, people have enjoyed watching their neighbors a little bit and understanding maybe a little bit more Absolutely. than what they did be before. And I think, if anything, it brings to light, you know, think about all the positive people we've got. Absolutely. You know, they, they Absolutely. give back. And we haven't even scratched the surface. You know that. Yeah. yeah. But well, it brings I, light to it. You know, I sent you initially sent you a list of, I don't yeah. know, I probably had 10 or 12 yeah, people. Several, several people did. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm sure. And, and you know, you haven't right. scratched it yet, right. you know, of what, what was on there. So it was just, yeah. it's endless. Yeah. It's endless. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the community, you know, Mr. start with Mr. Butcher, Mr. Nante, uh, Lee Cavan, all that was mentioned with Brian, uh, you know, my parents, my family, uh, my best friends, you know, Tony Page, Delbert Walls, Jeff Meyer, Dennis Salt, uh, Alan, Alan Crane. Just 
you know, you, you got it. You got to thank all of them. They, they're, 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 they're what? You know, I, I, I saw a thing yesterday. Like a lady said something about she's 57 years old. You know, I said, people talk about being old. So no, you got to celebrate it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, yeah, you do. Yep. You know, you you, you have life experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to share it. Your some, wisdom. And, and some people don't it, get to be that. Age. That's absolutely people. Many people are denied right. being 57 years old. Right. Uh, your wisdom, share. You know, share with people. Make a difference. Be a positive influence. Uh, I realize you can be a bad or good influence, either one. Your choice. You know, your choice, absolutely. So, uh, love Lagoni. Love everybody here. Uh, love the support we get for everything that we do. The alumni bank with the golf outing. Uh, all right. That's it, Greg. Thanks, man, for having me. Well, thank you for being a positive impact. Appreciate it. On the goalie. Try. Wayne Flick. Thank you all. Now you know a little bit more. You know a lot more about Wayne <laughs> and what you did before this. And, and we hope you appreciate it. We Thank you for watching this episode of Getting to Know Your Indiana Neighbor.